uh, from uh, University of Torino. And she's going to talk about the magnetism uh, of the Rio Mar Martino cave and uh, all her work on that uh, cave and spelotemes. Thanks a lot, uh, Elena, for accepting the invitation. Oh, wait. Can you see? Yes. Okay, see. thank you. Thank you to you all for having invited me to have this talk. I recently started to work on flowstone, on some flowstone of the Rio Martino cave, which is in the Northwestern Italian Alps. Here, uh, we perform a systematic uh, magnetic investigation at high uh, resolution. And this study provided uh, uh, intercorrelated uh, constraints for different application. And today I'm going to show you some results we obtain on the alpine paleo environment. Uh, this is the commonly uh, accepted model for the magnetic signal acquisition in a spilotem. Uh, the spilotem during the growth incorporates some magnetic particles, both of detrital or pedogenic origin, uh, drip in the cave by the drip water uh, or the cave stream. Also, the autogenic mineral can be grow um, in specific uh, condition. So basically, what we have uh, to, to what we we can use to unravel the, um, the, the, the the variation in the in the magnetic component are the magnetic phases, the granulometry, and the concentration. I just let you uh, see uh, shortly what uh, have been chosen so far. Uh, there are a lot of repetition because all of us have read the same papers. Here we start for, with the magnetic uh, phases. This is a work from Font et al. And uh, we can see that in the fresh speleotem, they found magnetite and possibly magmite that they interpreted as detrital um, component of primary origin from the um, soil by the drip water. And so this was a kind of environmental signature. On the right, you see that also the hematite and the gotite are present in this mixing. Going to the, <coughs> to the grain side, here you can see that in this work, uh, the magnetic signal has been compared to the biomaker um, bio bio uh, uh, of um, of a peatland in uh, central ch uh, China uh, to test uh, the monsoon impact, uh, uh, the impact of the monsoon on the rainfall. And they choose the ARM on SIRM, uh, SIRM ratio uh, that reveals the, the proportion of the fine magnetic SD grain on the MD and PSD grain. About the concentration, this is the most used parameter. We can see that the uh, iron soft and the MS uh, parameter have been, have been uh, chosen to document the precipitation, the regional precipitation, but also the global cli climate. Uh, we, here we can see the IRM soft flux, which is here defined. And uh, uh, here is, um, it has been run um, a spectral analysis, uh, and uh, it's um, a good ratio for the hydrological uh, uh, changes. And here you see a lot of uh, concentration parameters that have been used in, the, in a cave of Brazil to, to link uh, the signal, the magnetic signal obtained from uh, um, speleotem, uh, uh, cave sediments, and soil that were. Uh, that indicate uh, the, um, the influence of the soil erosion and the vegetation cover on the concentration of magnetic minerals. For Rio Martino, for Rio Martino, we use a concentration uh, parameter as well. We uh, perform all the measurements you see here in order to um, investigate the paleocellular variation, both in direction and relative palo intensity and to get some bulk magnetic parameters for uh, paleoenvironmental uh, reconstruction. 
we work on, um, on flowstones uh, and uh, we got to different uh, age, uh, ages, age intervals. So uh, we, we have two different uh, address lines. In the first, uh, we focus uh, on the contribution of a high resolution multi-proxy um, record to, um, to understand the alpine critical zone. In the second, we um, focus on the, the record and the relation with the alpine glacial history and regional clim climate. For both, we compare um, different uh, uh, proxy magnetic, uh, stable isotopes, uh, uranium uh, dating, growth rate, petrography, and facies analysis on the very same course. Then the composite uh, records were, was compare, were compared to other proxy for the Alpine region, as for example, the fluid activity, the landslide, the timberline, the, the, uh, the timberline, the timberline altitude, the arboreal vegetation, and the human activities. Why did we chose, uh, choose Ria Martino? Because uh, we had all the permission but, uh, for sampling, but after we discovered that that was an ideal uh, situation. Uh, about the geomorphological and geological situation, Ria Martino is a spring cave with two main sub-horizontal branches that are separated by a waterfall. The catchment, it is carved on dolomitic carbonates and the catchment is covered by 10 meters of quaternary glacial sediments. Um, about the, the cave drip recharge system is due to the slow water circulation within the glacial cover, but in the cave, there is also a stream. Uh, it has, it showed, the spill attempts in Rio Martino shows a highly magnetized rock in the cave uh, because the cave, uh, the catchment is close to the metaophiolite of the Mont Viso next to, <coughs> to the cave. Here we see why the Rio Martino uh, is uh, suitable for the magnetic investigation. First of all, the flowstone were easily um, drilled. And for the youngest, uh, we got two aside cores, 20, meter, 20 uh, centimeter more or less aside to see the consistency of the data. It was easily oriented and well dated. Here you see the age depth model we obtained on the uranium thorium dating. For the youngest uh, uh, core, we cover almost all the Holocene. For the oldest, uh, we cover the first part of the marine isotope stage six. So we had the opportunity to have a high resolution sampling. Here you see, we first measure a standard size specimen, the NRM intensity, and we obtain a, an intensity of the order of 10 to the minus three ampere on meter. So we cut into smaller slice, more or less three millimeter thick, which for the oldest, for the younger uh, core represents uh, approximately 45 years. For the same core, we had a resolution of 16 years for stable isotopes. So on the same core, we have two different proxies with a consistent resolution, and these at, is at the, uh, at the scale of the human life. For the RMD7, the resolution is lower, it is, as you can see, is, of the, is on the order of the hundreds of years. In the stereo here, you can see that the direction we got for three standard specimen size is statistically indistinguishable from that obtained on the 18 subsample slices on the very same specimens. Uh, thin section. The thin section show a predominant columnar calcite indicating the absence of alteration in the speleothem. 
Sometimes uh, in RD, R, R, MD7, uh, there we found a trace of a small scale dissolution as indicated by the mosaic of crystal that can be connected to incipient diagenesis. We can, however, say that the, the diagenetic processes do not, um, do not affect the speleotome because of their episodic uh, um, nature. Uh, about the, the, the trital phases, the mineralogy agrees with the catchment lithology being most composed of soil-derived iron oxide, serpentine group minerals, and clay minerals, sourced from the glacigenic sediment cover. So to confirm the reliability to record of the record in terms of paleomagnetic direction and origin and stability of the remanence magnetization, we performed the anisotropy of azothermal remanent magnetization on two selected depth ranges here in red, where the magnetic inclination were systematically, systematically above or below the expected one uh, with the, the geocentric actual dipole, dipole at the Rio Martino. Let's start with the anisotropy of magnetic susceptibility. Here you see that there is a, a control of the calcite growth crystallographic axis is vertical, and the same is true for the um, K3, and is perpendicular to the growth of the lamina. Back to the remanence uh, fabric, we can see that the maximum axis is consistent or even indistingu indistinguishable from the mean characteristic remanent magnetization obtained on the very same uh, ranges. So this indicates the control of the Earth's magnetic field on the orientation of the ferromagnetic minerals. We, uh, we do not detect any, uh, detected any uh, error in the paleomagnetic inclination, but uh, we were more, almost uh, horizontal while, while uh, the, the, the flowstone was mostly horizontal. Um, considering the magnetic phases on the left, you can see that there is uh, the predominance of low coercivity phases as, as clear from the hysteresis cycle and the S ratio. From uh, the Lowry experiments, uh, perhaps the small deflection can be ascribed to the occurrence of tight. As grain size, we can see that the most of the grains fall in the PSD and SD ranges. And about the origin, we added our the data on these two literal uh, graphs. Here we are in the black, the black square, here the diamond, red and blue light. And uh, we added on the um, literature one, and we found that magnetite was of the trital to pedogenetic in origin about uh, the data selection. So uh, here you can see that there is a strong correlation between the susceptibility and the magnetic intensity. Uh, these are due to the spikes. They uh, are associated with the coarser detrital grains that uh, we found in these uh, levels, uh, some uh, serpentinite lithics. And these were mostly discharged for our uh, for the following interpretation. Going to the other, the opposite part, the lowest contribution is due to the diamagnetic uh, calcite uh, fraction. So we decided to get rid of uh, the, 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 the highest and the lowest values and to uh, define the background magnetic flux in these ranges, which show the changes in the concentration of the fine grain material deposited by diffuse infiltration through the drip feeding network. The magnetic signal is mostly due to pedogenetic inorganic magnetite formed by weathering of the iron rich parent material likely from the contribution of the slow component of the aquifer, which circulates in the glacial cover sediments. Here we see all the proxy we got from uh, the same course on the left for the Holocene, on the right for the MIS-6. Uh, the BMF, uh, the susceptibility, the magnetic intensity and the thorium ratio 
are an independent proxy for the detrital contamination. The MDF instead is connected to the grain size. So for the MIS6, we have both the concentration and the grain size parameter. Um, about the, uh, yes, the, the, the thorium, the, the uranium thorium ratio and the lithofascious indicate the absence of uh, alteration. And the, the carbon is um, connected to the soil status and uh, it is uh, as well as the growth rate and is also controlled by the hydrological state of the aquifer. We have a coherent increase in the, we can observe in the BMF and in the carbon 13, which uh, um, derive from the possible um, control of the soil uh, development and the vegetation cover on the, on the detrital in, uh, flux, influx. Uh, for the oxygen, the, 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 it is a complex factor which mostly depend when uh, uh, consider its uh, paleoclimatic interpretation on, on cave location and setting. Now we are ready for the interpretation. Uh, we have all the available uh, proxy for the Alpine region uh, next to the cave. We connect all these uh, proxy and for the Holocene, this was uh, the intention was to uh, provide a uh, new insight in, on the links uh, among the climate, soil stability and evolution and land use. These in turn can, uh, can um, give an help to understand the dynamics of the Alpine critical zone. If you look at the composite record, you see that we distinguish three different intervals. The oldest, uh, we have uh, um, an um, anthropic pressure that was low in the alpine uh, high altitude sites. So the drier and possibly cooler period uh, controlled the soil instability and increased erosion intervals. So does soil erosion and higher <coughs> and higher detrital influx were linked to the climate driven reduction in vegetation in the vegetation cover. The same is true for the following period, but uh, we can observe more frequent abrupt uh, period of variation intervals of uh, high erosion. Lastly, in the youngest period, uh, there is the Iron Age. And with the Iron Age, we uh, recorded the Alpine, the setting of the Alpine economy. This uh, uh, resulted in, in, a, in a drastic change in the response of the soil stability to the climate variations with increasing uh, um, precipitation that promoted intervals of soil erosion. Here we have the results for the MIS6. Um, for, for, for this core, we uh, recognize two superimposed effects, a regional and local scale. At regional scale, in the interval uh, between 180 and 170, that is the MIS 6D, there is a uh, um, correspondence between the, our proxy and the precessional variation. Um, in this period, uh, some authors uh, reported an enhanced location cyclogenesis that affected the Mediterranean region and uh, eventually reached also the Southern Alps. This has two effects uh, on the Southern Alps, an intense uh, precipitation and then a warmer summer at high level with high level of ablation. In the descending part of the precessional curves after 170 kilo years, the records um, change, the seasonal contrast weakened and the, the summer temperatures decreases. Then at the local scale, the records show some prominent and episodic um, variation, wet, uh, wetter, drier, oscillation with a rather regular pattern around two kilo year. 
So let's do a short comparison between uh, the, uh, the two Rio Martino cores, what have we learned? Um, we have called the two different galleries. They are next one, one to the other, but are different. So the differences that we have observed have observed can be just connected to different uh, lithological or um, drip uh, feeding system with different uh, residence time. However, if we see uh, these two diagram, we can see that uh, during the RMD7, uh, there is only the 29% of the records that are in the BMF, um, in the susceptibility classes that we selected against the 70% of the uh, holocene. This has been uh, interpreted as the presence of a less evolved and poorly drained soil in the MS MIS-6 with respect to the Holocene. And also the other uh, proxy from, other, um, from the Alpine region uh, confirm this interpretation. Anyhow, it was not so uh, everything, it was not so straight and I have a lot of open question. Um, one, the first is this one. Here you see that uh, um, there is a strong efficiency in the uh, acquisition of the remnants. If you look at these uh, graphs, you can see the, the ratio NRM on IRM is rather high uh, when compared to other sedimentary rock, rocks uh, uh, is higher than usual. We have also performed uh, the relative power intensity on all the, 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 the specimens. And um, uh, following the, the pseudo Tellier method uh, as uh, Toxet Ali proposed, we met uh, all the requirements of the protocol, but and the, the array graphs uh, are of uh, good quality, really constantly or good quality. But if we compare these uh, RPI data with other, we have a poor agreement. So um, if we take into consideration the, if we consider the detrital model, the spiliotem should give good results. But if we go back here and we follow the suggestion of the authors here in the reference, uh, it is difficult to explain this data simply with a DRM. So uh, is it possible that there is another type of magnetization, possibly a CRM that even if less interest is superimposed and uh, we can't distinguish? Um, this is a, an open question. Um, many researchers have, rep have, have um, reported the, the occurrence of uh, autogenic magnetite or grotite. So the question is, uh, normally this is neglected because it's, ne it's negligible in, uh, with respect to the trital uh, low cursivity phases, but can we just neglect it? Uh, another question that is in opposition with this graph, uh, uh, is, uh, is uh, the, the magnetic fabric. We have a strong control of the magnetic field in the ease orientation of the magnetic remnants, but we still don't know why and which way. The, we don't have the physical model for the orientation of the remnants vector in the spiliotem growth layer. So I think that all these questions still await for uh, for an answer. Last, uh, I reported here the, uh, the Spearman rec correlation of Giacchetto et al. Uh, 2021. As you can see, there is a strong correlation between the concentration parameter and the grain size parameter. I suggest to use both. If we have a, a typical detrital uh, record, uh, concentration is, is fine, it works fine. But if we have also a CRM, we must also add the, the grain size control. And this, I think, is particularly important. Lastly, uh, of course, uh, we should add some other region to this uh, 
to this uh, frame because um, work are really focused above all for the for the magnetism because uh, the other proxy are all around the world but for the magnetism a lot of work is still to be done this uh, this presentation is based on these two papers and i wish to thank my co-authors which uh, did a lot of work thank you very much thanks a lot elena for your very nice presentation and uh, for raising some questions already uh, i haven't the answer <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, uh, does anyone want to, to start uh, uh, doing questions? Uh, well, I can. Eric. Uh, great, great work, Elena. This is very nice. Uh, just about your question about uh, chemical remanent magnetization or some secondary mineral. Uh, well, I'm, I'm not sure that that this can easily happen in, in spiral time, and maybe my colleague can, can tell more. But uh, calcite precipitation is quite fast. I mean, it's, it's really fast. And so once the magnetic mineral are trapped within the calcite, and because you have quite, you have few porosity in your sample, oxygen fugacity should be very low. And in this case, oxidation and precipitation of magnetic mineral does not seem really suitable in your case. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm not convinced that you have, uh, that you may have in this case, uh, a secondary chemical magnetization. And, and in the graph you, you show of Fuller, uh, Fuller and Tal uh, 2002, normally remagnetized, um, remagnetized uh, rocks have a concave shapes and have ratio much lower than, than this one. So looking at your curve, it seems that it's primary. It, uh, it, it's, it's, it's not the shape of, of bimodal or, or remagnetized. Yeah. Uh, yes, this is true. The shape is not the one uh, pro proposed by the author, but the, 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 the ratio are, are, are unusually high. Yeah. But can it be due to the grain sign? I don't know. Uh, they are rather uh, uniform. I mean, uh, it's... Um, Aside the, 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 the spikes that uh, were clearly MD, you see the MDF were 10 millitesla and so on. The other are rather uniform, varying from 40 to 50 millitesla. And uh, no, I'm, I'm not sure it is a, a problem of the, of the grain size, but I don't know what it can be. Elena, uh, you have shown in your results that you have uh, different microfabrics uh, among your stalagmites. Do you see any difference uh, in terms of uh, remanence acquisition in, in one and in, in another? Uh, Between the two cores? Uh, yeah, or in different microfabrics you see? No, no, no. Uh, uh, we still want to do some other experiments on uh, with with the partial uh, anisteretic and so on. But for now, I haven't seen uh, any difference. Okay, thank you. All right, I can. I had a quick right. question following up on on Eric's work uh, or Eric's question about the fuller. Um, Fuller plot that you were showing. So you said that it would be, you were worried about CRM and I just wanted to clarify, this is CRM and magnetite, right? Because your gertite or your hematite wouldn't demagnetize because you're doing AF. So you wouldn't really see that. Um, I mean, the hematite would, but when I've done red beds with the Fuller test, it, it it's just, it, it's really small. Like you don't actually see the demagnetization just because of how the AF's working. Um, so you were thinking orthogenic magnetite um, for a CRM? Uh, I'm not sure I've, I catch perfectly the question. Can you please repeat? Yeah. So in the fuller, you had mentioned that in the fuller plot, you said you might be seeing a um, DRM plus a CRM mm -hmm. in that um, in your ratio of NRM to IRM. And you said... Right, this plot, yes. 
So in this plot, you were saying that it might be a combination of DRM and CRM. And I was just trying to understand the magnetic minerals because, because this is AF demagnet, is this, because these are being demagnetized using alternating field and that's your line, you wouldn't see that, that change if it was hematite or gertite. It's uh, no, we haven't seen uh, hematite or gertite, uh, no, 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 just a little bit of gertite. I don't, I, I'm not sure I show you the lower experiments. Uh, no, the most are, are magnetites, okay. magnetites, and uh, and I, I think they are detrital in origin, but uh, these graphs uh, is not so clear to me. <laughs> That's uh, right. and then I guess I just sort of had. Two follow-ups was, is it possible that because of this interesting formation of how these work, I guess it would be fascinating. I know that Julie Bowles was here earlier and that she'd been doing work on stromatolites. And so I wonder if in other systems where we're having sort of this fluid layer, um, if we, just the uniqueness of the actual remnant magnetization, could it mean that it's higher, right? I guess the other comment is Griegite question mark, question mark. Oh. Yep. Uh, you're suggesting they are in fact, uh, the, uh, the process is more effective in the, in the case of uh, stalagmites than in normal sediments. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. I think that that would be a question. And then I guess the Griegite is, I think I know from conversations with Andrew Roberts, you know, we sometimes do see Griegite precipitating in these carbonate systems. And I don't know if that's, um, it, Griegite's just so hard to find, um, you know, in. Something to study. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. Uh, do you have an, another question? I have a small question, a short question, okay. Go ahead. Uh, well, it's a very impressive data set, Elena. Um, can you uh, say something about the secular variation uh, curve that you got from the Holocene and uh, how well does it uh, agree with regional data compilations or global models? Uh, yes, we published a paper, but uh, I was not supposed to talk so high <laughs> about uh, secular variation. So I, I, I now have no. Anyhow, they they fit properly with the uh, with the uh, with the model, and um, we have no problem. So we we were so active with the results of the secular variation that uh, we said, okay, let's start with the relative pal intensity. So we have all the description and, uh, and uh, it was, uh, no, it, it, it works with uh, both with the models and with some other data from, uh, from the region. Good. So both the, um, uh, and did, have you tried to calibrate the relative palo intensity to absolute palo intensity from the region? Uh, we have we have started to see that, uh, and so it is not uh, it is long to be finished. Uh, we just <laughs> simple simple finish the, the all the measurement, and to a first sight, it seems there is not a good uh, correlation with uh, with other data. Mm. But work is still to be done. But this is impressive because the, 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 the array graph are always of good quality and everything is apparently uh, correct for to, to have a beautiful record. That's what I mean. Yeah. So why? <laughs> yes, it is a beautiful record, I agree. <laughs> uh, Elena, so when you're making the comparison, are you comparing to archaeomagnetic intensity or from other RPI from sediment records, for example, in the Mediterranean? I use both, um, mostly sediment records from Mediterranean and also Archeo and Mobile and so on. I've tried with all. <laughs> and is it that uh, the pattern of variability doesn't match or is there an offset in time that you see? 
Mm, I'm, I can't answer about this because it was really, I'll, it is too early to give an answer. <laughs> I no haven't. problem, no problem. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. So I'd like to thank Elena and, and uh, all the uh, colleagues that uh, made questions. Now we need to, to go forward to the next and last talk.